Hi, I'm Calvin Rose, and welcome to Market Minute. Please hit the like, subscribe, and notification icons so you'll never miss one of our upcoming market reviews. Let's dive right in and talk about what's been happening in the markets. It's been a little bit crazy. Um, this week has been on again, off again, and today was no exception. Uh, you can see here that the uh, only uh, equity markets that closed up were the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Small Cap 2000. The, both the S&P and the NASDAQ closed lower. Uh, what I do like about the picture today, though, is that gold, which has been the safe haven in this Ukraine crisis, uh, did drop today along with oil. So I, I view that as a, a good sign. And we'll talk about the risk in each one of those markets a little bit later. But let's dive right into it. So a week ago when we talked about the risk in the equity markets, the equity risk was moderate. And if we look at today, it's still moderate. And later on in this video, for you data nerds, we'll get into all the details and I'll show you the oscillator graphs and why I'm making these rankings for the uh, equity markets. A little bit of a bonus for today, though, is we're going to show you uh, our how our natural selection algorithms ranked the top 20 stocks in high growth stocks and in stable stocks. These are proprietary algorithms that we've developed to evaluate whether stocks are potential high performers or not. And high performance can mean different things, as you can see here. So in, in this case, we've created a metric that looks for high growth stocks. These are a lot of the stocks that you might find in Kathy Wood's ARK Invest ETFs. And then we've created a separate metric here where we're looking for more stable growth out of stocks. And you can see these are very a very different look you know, companies like J&J &J and Merck and McDonald's and uh, so on. So Verizon, you know, typically all dividend paying stocks, although that's not a criteria for selecting them. Anyway, eventually what we plan to do is start a Patreon where you can subscribe and get access to not just the top 20, but at least the top 100, if not all of the stocks that we rank. For gold, a, a week ago, gold risk was at moderate risk. And this week, it's actually moved to high risk. For interest rates, a week ago, interest rates were looking like they were going to go higher. And we're talking about the risk on the 20-year uh, Treasury bonds, TLT. This week, they have moved to low risk, and they look like they might be poised to continue falling, which is kind of surprising. And the cryptocurrency markets, um, last week, they looked fabulous, and this week, they still look fabulous. And in fact, if we look at the natural selection um, for the top cryptos, you can see how they're ranked here. By the way, we always include cash just to see what the risk is in the, in the market. And you can see right now, cryptos are all doing well compared to cash. And now for you data nerds, let's dive into the oscillators and talk about why I gave equities and interest rates and gold and cryptos, those ratings that I did. So here we're looking at the S&P 500 uh, oscillator chart. Again, the black line is the price of SPY and the gray line, the gray solid line is the buying pressure. The orange line is the selling pressure. Now you can see here that the buying pressure recently has been kind of waning and in fact looks like it's about to cross um, where the where the selling pressure crosses above the buying pressure. This is not good. Uh, although the, the longer term, the one month trend for the buying pressure has been up, I, I really don't like what I see here. On the 10 day chart, you can see again, uh, buying pressure is waning, uh, selling pressure coming up. 20 day chart, the selling pressure never got below the buying pressure or in another way to put it, the buying pressure never got above the selling pressure, not a good sign. And then the sum of the charts, the selling pressure just rose above the buying pressure in the last day or so. This is not a great look. 
Um, but the markets are tentative right now. There's a lot going on in the world. So I, I gave it a moderate risk. There's some other things that we look at that look a little bit better than this. Um, and, and let's take a look also at the uh, NASDAQ 100, which actually looks a little bit worse. So you can see on the five day chart, uh, selling pressure above the buying pressure. 10 day chart, again, selling pressure above the buying pressure. 20 day chart, selling pressure above the buying pressure. And some of the chart, selling pressure above the buying pressure. Uh, again, there's other indicators we look at that are saying th that things aren't quite this bad, but uh, if these continue to decline, we'll report that and uh, talk about it next week. Now let's take a look at gold risk because gold has been sort of the counterbalance, the safe haven play here. Uh, you can see that gold prices peaked out back here on March 8th and have kind of declined and been going sideways since then. But you can see that the buying pressure has fallen dramatically here while the selling pressure is coming up on the five day chart. On the 10 day chart, same thing. Uh, buying pressure is falling, uh, selling pressure is increasing. Now the 20 day chart uh, still hasn't caved. Uh, this still looks good and healthy. So we'll see where this goes. And on the sum of the charts, you can see that the, the, the buying pressure is declining here and the selling pressure is going up. So it looks like there's some risk here to gold prices. And honestly, I hope that continues because that means that equities are going to become more attractive and people won't be putting their money into a safe haven like gold. Let's take a look at interest rates. Let's take a look at TLT, the 20 year treasuries. And you can see here how the price fell. It, it sort of tried to rally back here and then continued falling again. Well, it's trying to rally again. And you can see that the, the, the buying, buying pressure has moved up above the selling pressure on the five day, on the 10 day as well. In fact, on the 10 day, it did it way back here, which is great. On the 20 day, um, they're, they're kind of neck and neck here, haven't quite crossed yet. And on the sum of the charts, they have crossed. So right now it looks like interest rates may continue to fall and the price of TLT may continue to go up, but this can change very quickly. Now let's take a look at cryptocurrencies. The oscillators for the cryptocurrencies have looked fabulous for quite a while now. Uh, in fact, last week we talked about that they looked like they were in great shape and you can see it in the price action. Um, back here when selling pressure was high, cryptocurrency price action actually held up pretty well, kind of went sideways here. But you can see since uh, uh, March 13th, the price of uh, cryptocurrencies has been steadily increasing. And you can see the buying pressure here has been above the selling pressure. Good, good stuff. On the 10 day chart, again, buying pressure above the selling pressure. Again, good, 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 good. And you see it in the price action. Um, now here on the 20 day chart, um, there's been a little bit of crossing here. Finally, the buying pressure has crossed over the selling pressure. Um, this is quite a bit late though, as it usually is. And then on the sum of the charts, you can see that back here, since back here and um, around the 17th of, of March, well after the bottom, the buying pressure has been above the selling pressure. So cryptocurrencies look like a great place to be. And hopefully this bodes well for tech because they, I think they've, they tend to be correlated lately, but we'll see where that goes. I'm Calvin Rose and thank you for watching Market Minute. If you like these videos, please hit the like, subscribe and notification icons so you won't miss one of our upcoming market reviews. That's all for now. Thank you.